Hey everybody, it's George Whittem. Mm-hmm. I'm Dan Leonard. And we are voiceover. B.O. B.S. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm, I did. I'm sorry. I'm showered. I'm sorry. I got it. We're no. shooting the rehearsal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's just rehearsal. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Anyway, good. we are here to have a great show tonight where we get to interview Rick Wasserman, who's in studio with us tonight. And I saw him with his shirt off. Well, you're very but lucky. But that's not what we're talking about. But I did too We're talking as well. about voiceover, sorry. Yeah, just, we're going to be talking everything voiceover. We've got two seasoned veterans of the voiceover business here in the studio with us tonight. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. So stand by and hang on to your hats. We'll be right back right after this. And your must. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years of experience in broadcasting and recording, and the myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, finally, to bring you all the latest technology, superstars of voiceover today, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voice over business, this is Voice Over Body Shop. Voice Over Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Antland Productions, where you can get a killer demo. Source Elements, your source for Source Connect, Source Connect Pro, and Source Connect Now. VO2GoGo.com and Rehearsal Lab. VoiceOver Extra, your one stop for voiceover resources. Edge Studio, find your voice. And Visi Demos, your audio demo never looked so good. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. We're here, yay! This is George Whittem. <laughs> and I'm Dan Leonard. <laughs> and this is voiceover <laughs> body shop. <laughs> and tonight it's a lot of V-O-B-S. It no. is, I'll say. No, actually, we have Lori Allen here. Thank you for coming so much. Thank, thank you, you for so much for being able to fill in for us tonight. I know. I, I, I wax. I don't I, I don't have... I wanted to really have like a good homage to, to his mustache, to Dan's mustache. But I, <laughs> I, I, I shaved. I got rid of it. So I hope you forgive me, Dan. Oh, well. Um, but thanks for having me. It was this filling awesome. in so nicely, too. Right? I know. It, yeah. was really, uh, it was really something. But, you know, <laughs> I did what I had to do. So. Well, it was really nice for you to join us. Dan is nice. flying right now. Literally, he tried to join us, join us on Zoom from the airplane, but the connection was too bad. We couldn't, we couldn't get him in. He was but. like still life, and we caught him in a still, and he was like this. <laughs> exactly. Like, just very solemn and somber, like, wah, wah. He is so bummed that he is not yeah. here right now. I Trust me. We should he just trash the place and be like, yeah, party! <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, just like throw stuff through the window like, tell? yeah. How could you tell anyway? Yeah. Um, no, no. The place looks good. We, have, we got it cleaned up for just yeah. for you guys. It looks great. Um, but it's going to be a fun show tonight. But before we go much further, I need to read the news because we do it every night. Normally, Dan does it. It's my turn. So did here it, we did go it, did it, did with it, the news. Did it, did it, did it. Oh and boy. now, the voiceover Don't extra, ask me to read that. Oh VOBS God. News, the latest and most comprehensive voiceover industry news, brought to you uh, sure live. You know, give me a cue. All right, this this is the uh, voiceover news, the voiceover extra news, actually sponsored by Voiceover Extra, and this is about being more productive. What's frustration number one for a freelance voice actor? It's being busy without being productive. Voice actor Paul Strickwerda confesses that's a trap he's fallen into over the course of his 26 years in this business. It's a night of seasoned veterans around mm -hmm. here. I was working all day long, but without much to show for it, Paul says. Unfortun or fortunately for us, Paul realizes how to get back on track to more productivity and he shares this in a new article on VoiceOver Extra. Paul says something finally dawned upon him. Busy people talk about how little time they have, but productive people make time for what is important. The question is, how do you know what is important for your business? On some days, everything seems important. Answering emails, invoicing clients, making phone calls, updating the website, Recording auditions, paying bills, designing marketing materials, researching new gear, keeping up with social media. The list is endless, especially when you're a one-person band. 
In the article, Paul lists how he's become more productive. One, don't try to do it all. Instead, focus on what you're good at. Outsource the rest. For instance, if you're not a kick-ass web designer, hire someone who is and have him or her teach you to maintain and update the site once it's up and running. Here, here. Yeah, that's very important. Do you have time to become an SEO specialist? You probably should find someone who is. If you stink at bookkeeping, get an office assistant to take care of the numbers and let an accountant prepare your taxes. This also ensures you that uh, that you maximize your deductions and you minimize the money going to the IRS. If you're recording a massive project such as an audiobook on a tight deadline, pay someone to edit and master the audio for you. Please do this. I can't en- emphasize delegate, enough delegate, how important delegate. this is. Delegate, delegate, delegate. Why spend time on a $60 to $100 per hour job if you could make between $350 and $500 per hour? In other words, if you can be making a lot more as a voice actor, be voice acting, not do not editing. It's mm-hmm. really important. Paul also says that if you're thinking about how much all of this will cost, you're looking at it the wrong way. Reinventing the wheel, learning on the fly, trying to do everything yourself, it will leave you frustrated without energy to do what you do best the very things clients hire you to do. And that is going to cost you. The article mentions three more productivity enhancers. Be selective in what you audition for. Be selective in the lines you record in auditions. And learn to say the word no. Check out the details now at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. All right. Very nice. That was my first time reading the news. Very ever. nice. I think I think I give you woohoo. Thank you very much. Thank Maybe you. Rick Wasserman should do your demo reel. <laughs> <laughs> right? This is a ploy. Very nice. I wanted to do this show without Dan just so I'd have a chance to Ha-ha. prove my prowess reading the news. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, George. Um, very good. No. A plus. Thank you. A plus. Um before we go on, because our second the second after the first break, we get to really get into the fun stuff. But mm-hmm. we do have a video package for all of us that have been listening to me go on and on about the Sound Devices Mix Pre, a piece of gear I was really excited about. I actually did go see it at NAB. I actually shot a video. Or Dan shot the video, and yeah. I'm on camera. Very we nice. got an interview, and let's go take a look. And after that, we'll be right back on VOBS with Lori Allen. Woohoo, Dan Leonard. This just keeps getting it confused. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Hey everybody, this is George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World here at NAMM Show 2017. We drove all the way from Los Angeles, pretty much, to see one thing. <laughs> and that's, that's this really innovative device from Sound Devices called the Mix Pre. There's the Mix Pre 3 and the Mix Pre 6. And here to share, us, share a little bit about it. This is not just any spokes model for Sound Devices. This is the guy that designed this thing. This is Paul. How are you doing, Paul? I'm good, George. Thanks for chatting with me. And I do w- would like to say that I'm not the only one that made this, right? It's a big team effort. You didn't make that in your basement? <laughs> uh, yeah, I hand-knitted one last night, you know. Now, these are a big team effort. I'm one of the key designers. I'm responsible for the user interface, but obviously there's a massive hardware, firmware, mechanical engineering design team, and then all the infrastructure that supports that. So, yeah, thanks for uh, inviting me and to be able to talk about these. Well, the reason that I was excited about this for a few reasons, I, I love Sound Devices products. I have a history with using them. Uh, the 302 mixer, the USB pre's, I've always loved them. And this thing adds just the, a lot of functionality. And for voice actors, which is our world, the ability to do a really unique thing, which is record a backup internally, while at the same time recording to your software, that's something that's just just doesn't exist elsewhere. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Do a little tour of the unit physically, and then we'll go. We'll we'll talk about just that. Give a little bit of background first, because you guys are obviously interested in high sound quality, right? Yes, very much. So, sound devices are well known in the TV and film industry for producing the highest quality mic preamps and the best build quality products that can stand up to the rigors of everyday everyday environments, abuse, and what have you. So, what we wanted to do is bring that that quality level to a wider market because traditionally our products have been priced up there so we wanted to bring some products out which could be accessible by a wider market sub one thousand dollars and we wanted 
to appeal to like voiceover artists, videographers, podcasters, musicians, sound designers, sound effects, production sound mixers as well who want to supplement their kit with a few extra inputs or whatever, but a much wider audience. And we've achieved that. We've These are solid die-cast aluminum chassis build. I mean, you can literally drive a truck over these. And the mic preamps, there's no compromise on these. They're a brand new design, really low noise floor, minus 130 dBV A-weighted, you know, 32-bit ADCs with a great dynamic range of 120 dB. You know, it's all discrete component design. There's no off-the-shelf ICs in here. You know, to achieve those figures, you need to go discrete. That's and unusual. Like a lot of the other products, they share a lot of common, you know, IC chips. And so you guys design this thing from the ground up. Right. And the other key thing about this, we really wanted to design a tool where the tech didn't get in the way. We wanted it to be really um, intuitive and not um, overcluttering the mind. So you can see from the interface, it's very minimalist. You know, it's just three volume knobs and uh, transport buttons. They're the things you use most often, right? Um, the touch screen allows, this is a touch screen by the way, I can actually power it on. Um, the touch screen allows us to put, uh, remove all the less used features and put them in, a, an, in another interface. But they're still all very, very simple to access. So if you're familiar with an iPhone, you're easily going to be able to navigate this product. It's so easy. So this is, as you mentioned just before, this is a multi-channel recorder. It records internally to an SD card. And it's, it's behind the battery pack. So you can see here there's a battery pack and that resides in the back here, okay? You can record multi-channel. You can call the individual channels as isolated tracks, but also a mix at the same time. So in this case, this is a three-channel device. So it's a five-track recorder and it can record up to 96K. This is a six-channel device. There's four XLRs. TRS combos and then you've got further two line inputs here on unbalanced so this is a six input eight track recorder that goes up to 192 kilohertz um, so they're the main differences between the two units um, so the key here was recording multi-channel recording mixing but also it's a multi-channel USB audio device and that can actually work simultaneously while still recording to the internal media and that is a unique feature and it opens up all sorts of possibilities for backup you know you just mentioned this podcast scenario where you're doing a long t not podcast a voiceover scenario where you're recording a long take to uh, what have you in the, the computer corrupted the file somehow knowing it's on here as well is great opens up all sorts of other opportunities like with uh, podcasters who want to bring in voice over ip via their computer, Skype or FaceTime, whatever application you use for that, route that USB source from the computer to a fader and now you can mix those contributor sources with your own local mic. You can press the channel buttons here to set up each input. You don't have to deep dive into a menu, so it's very fast, very immediate. You don't need a user guide with this thing. Let's talk about some powering aspects of this as well. So this is obviously an anywhere, anytime product. It can be used in a studio or it can be used out in the field. Um, we have this four-way battery pack, um, four AAs, nickel metal hydros that go somewhere between two and three hours. We also have an eight-way, um, eight AA battery pack, which doubles the duration to five to six hours. And then there's a dual L Sony L-mount battery pack, which could power it for up to a week, depending on the size of the batteries you're using. That's the battery we have on this light over here, I think, actually. And then on top of that, you have your USB-C. Now, I don't think there's any other device in this category which uses USB-C. This obviously is our USB audio interface to a computer, Mac or Windows, but it also powers the device. Um, it's a great companion for the new MacBook Pros. Really nice, because with the USB-C, but it can also be powered from a USB-A port on a computer as well. This automatically detects the power from the power source and will tell you and allow you to either switch to batteries or allow you to disable certain features. So to power this fully with three phantom mics at 10 milliamp per phantom, uh, per phantom, a USB, an old USB one source is not going to have enough power. So in that case, it will automatically disable the phantom on one of the channels. Still get two fan condensers in there, so it's great. Another cool feature of this baby is the built-in Bluetooth. So you can control it from your iPhone. I have an iPhone app. Let's see what we'll turn that to get some signal level going. There you go. 
so now you can see your meters and you can I can swipe that way as bigger meters see different meter views you can record stop and then I can even name files from here as well so it lists me all the files and then I can select a file and rename it or what have you fantastic sounding headphone amp it really is a wicked out full range it's got a really musical sound to it and it's got a lot of drive so my question is when you need tech support and you call sound devices is you are you the guy I'm going to talk to no <laughs> <laughs> No, we've got a whole team that uh, uh, we have a dedicated tech support team who are active 24/7. We also, you know, always, you can always get a human on the phone, and we have uh, great forums, Facebook pages that people constantly post to, and usually within minutes people answer on that. You know, well, if when it's, if it's not us, it will be the other users who are using the product. So, good point. When can we get it, and how much? Um, okay, so May the 15th, we're expecting to deliver, maybe sooner, but May the 15th is what we're saying right now. Um, the Mix Pre 3 is $649, and the Mix Pre 6 is $899. Man, that's amazing. Well, I'm looking forward to, we're going to get one in to demo in, in studio and really put it through its paces, so I'm looking forward to that. Really nice to talk to you, Paul. Congrats on the new product. It's really exciting. Thanks. Boom. <laughs> Thanks, George. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> this is George Woodham from NAB 2017 at the Sound Devices booth. You're competing for work with other voice talents, and every one of them has a powerful, unique, engaging voice demo. Your voice demo needs to stand out from the crowd in an unforgettable way. Now it can. Busy visual voice demos take your awesome voice demo and add a visual element, reinforcing your brand. Your demo will leave a lasting impression because it stimulates two senses instead of just one. Your voice is your livelihood. You need an effective demo to open doors of opportunity. Blow those doors down with a Vizzy visual voice demo. Visit VizzyDemos.com for more information. Your audio demo never looked so good. Take your voice demos to the next level, a visual level, with Vizzy visual voice demos. Mention Voice Over Body Shop and get an additional 10% off. Hey everybody, thanks for watching and we got a little spot here from Source Elements, one of our great sponsors here at Voice Over Body Shop. Source Elements is a fantastic tool for those that really need to amp up their voiceover business and start playing at a level that means that they have to connect to other studios live. Maybe you've heard the buzzword ISDN. ISDN, it's sticking around for a while, but for now, those that are trying to get it are finding it very expensive to get and very hard to even source in some areas. So Source Connect has been an alternative to ISDN that's been in development now for 10 years. It's been improving steadily every year, and it's the best software they've ever made. Version 3.9, Source Connect Now. Uh, actually, Source Connect Now is available, and that's a free software. And Source Connect 3.9, Standard and Pro, are available for those that need to connect to studios who are Source Connect equipped. Chances are, if you're getting into the world of commercials, you're doing things, uh, live directed work, studios are using Source Connect more than ever. You should probably get on board and be ready to connect to those studios and open yourself up to a whole nother level of work. So if you want to get started, go to Source Elements at source-elements.com and you can sign up for a 15-day free trial. Always say that again. Make sure everyone knows. Source-elements.com. Right? And go. you can get signed up right away for a 15-day <laughs> free trial, and you don't have to have an iLock key to use Source Connect anymore. You can use it without an iLock. Say Rick what? is very surprised to hear that news, and which is very handy for folks that found the iLock key to be a bit of a frustration. Mm -hmm. um, so go check it out, and we'll be right back right after this. VoiceOver Body Shop. Learn the latest in VoiceOver technology. Learn how to get rid of that. VoiceOver Body Shop, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, on VOBS.US. Hey 
Hey, we are back here at VOBS. I wanted to take a chance to introduce you guys to those that don't know Lori Allen. The few Dan that Leonard. are watching the show. Damn it. I know. She's trying to, she's a great actor, but you can't quite pull off Dan Leonard. I can't? No. Uh, even if I was like, hmm, and put the glasses at the very end of my <laughs> you nose. You have way too much not. hair. Not uh, happening. <laughs> not happening. We both love dogs. And it's like, okay, there's, I love Dan. I love um, Dan. Thank you for having me. But Lori, so tell us a little about, about, what has been happening in the world of Lori Allen lately? Like, voiceover has been a part of your life for how long now? Gosh, well, my parents uh, my parents met in theater school. Mm-hmm. It was like they met at camp. They, met, no, they went to uh, theater school. They were uh, radio uh, theater majors as, as with radio minors. Oh. And so then they both went off into the world of voiceovers, mm-hmm. which was really kind of cool. So I grew up, like, with my mom doing, like, booth announcing in the Washington, D.C. area. And yes, my dad booth announcing. And, That's right, everybody. Yeah. And then my dad was doing... Um, uh, he started his own advertising agency, and he was doing jingles. So I had like artistic, groovy, and still do uh, parents who still do you know advertising and stuff. And my dad yeah. would stick us in commercials, and so I think my sister and I are like, "This is weird, but this is really cool." So I didn't. I think if I'd come home and said like. I've always said this to you, right? If I'd come home and said, I want to be a doctor or a lawyer, my parents would have been like, that's ridiculous. That's insane. You need to have a solid backup job like tap dancing right. or, you know, or juggling. Um, that would have, you know, I mean, that would have been weird if I had said I wanted a normal job. But they were very supportive. And I started doing commercials. My first you're commercial. Of carny, you're of, of carny folk. I'm definitely. I should be like, boop, 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 as we're yeah, speaking juggling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I started off doing an archway cookie spot. Oh, and yeah. somebody was like, somebody gave, you know, did the little line reading and I got it right away. And then I think the second spot was for my dad. We had to be like excited on uh, Christmas, Hanukkah shopping or something like that. And I think my third commercial when I was like five was for a pizza, for like Shakey's Pizza. And uh, we found out that that's when I couldn't eat some kind of bread. Product. We were all like, I ah, doing these crazy faces and stuff like that. And I, <laughs> we all like threw up on cue because you didn't have spit buckets back then for commercials. Uh. We were like, come on down to Shakey's, my for a change, a little change. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but so, yeah, so then I went to theater school and I got out and I was like, I wonder if, I wonder if I should, if I should do voiceovers as like a, as like a day job, you know, that would be my day job, right? Huh. Until I hit it big, like, you, you even had the the concept that that was a possibility of doing voiceover as a day job. Right. I thought that would be my day job before like I hit it big on like Law and Order because it was like, ding, ding, that was like the big show that was Mm -hmm. ding, ding going on when I was uh, living in New York. And so then I I, uh, I went home. My dad made me a demo, and I came back. And my dear friend Alice Woodfield, who's one of my great mentors, she tweaked it and made it a little snazzy too. So between the two of them, I had a great demo. Mm-hmm. And then at the time, I guess they needed that kind of like scratchy, like the kind of voice, whatever that was then, probably yeah. from like smoking pot in college. Which <laughs> right, it's not that I did that. Right, no, of and. And then uh, I was the first voice of Lifetime. So I started off really doing promos, then mm-hmm. went into more animation. And then since I was a musical theater major um, and I did the Groundlings, I was like, I'm going to be a definite shoe in for animation. And that was so cocky and wrong because you need to be studying. Yeah. So when yeah. I moved to Los Angeles to do more film and television on camera, mm-hmm. um, I took plenty of classes. I studied and studied and studied and studied. And I took a lot of workshops and finally made my demo with my mentor, Charlie Adler, when I was oh, ready. Yeah. And then that's mm-hmm. sort of how that all kind of came together. Holy cow. And that became my day job. Thank goodness, knock on wood. Wow. Yes. So what's keeping you the most busy these days in terms of voiceover? And you, you can name customers or you can name genres, but what's what kind of work is keeping you the, the I'm most I'm so booked? grateful. Right now, it's literally across the board. So yeah. I get to be the voice of Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. So I have oh, a yeah. promo job that I'm very, very excited about. I love being uh, the voice for them, I get to work twice a week from my home studio that you designed for me. Yay! Which is great. Thank it's a neat you. Little studio. I, George, you're amazing. Just works. I can't even imagine anybody else ever build it. Like it's like this big. My old house was nice and yeah. big, and this time, for whatever reason, this house is. We like, work in whatever space you have available. We we will make it work. Call him. <laughs> and um, and then I have this Valspar spot running commercially where there's two little talking chameleons. Oh yeah. I'm talking about paint. Yes. So that's really I've funny. That. And they write the spots uh, for us, which is really great. So that's and, the one where they keep writing new spots. They they yes, rotate them out. Praise relatively Jesus. Kind of like a Geico thing where they have a mm-hmm. lot of different spots they Correct. run. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So I feel very grateful for that. And awesome. you know what? We can, t- I'm sure that Rick will attest to yeah, this you as guys well. Can chat about if that. it weren't for improv and like, you know, my, my drama background, mm-hmm. um, that's a huge part of why, because it was just about talking about uh, um, an empty house and like white walls. And I just moved into my house at the time. So they were like, have the actors ramble on about, you know, painting and their own experiences. And I was like, well, all right. Phoning you know. in my real life experiences yeah. right about now. Yeah. yeah. And then animation wise, I just got to be, um, I do a lot of work for Pixar and I'm still in SpongeBob. We're going into our, what is it, 17th year 
I was what? just in a couple of, yeah, we're in our 17th <laughs> year. Someone tell me, someone type in or tweet to me what season I am always forgetting. Is it 11th season? 10th or 11th season? So I get to be Pearl Crabs now going into like, I don't know, 18 years. I'm 18 years old, but I'm really 16. Um, <laughs> and then I just got to do an episode of Henry Danger uh, for Nickelodeon. So, um, hmm. so that's great. And Is so that what they call a of, walk-on when you do one episode of a show? It's called a guest star. Oh, guest star? Gotcha. I do walk into a the studio. On. A talk on. <laughs> t- I guess maybe it could be a talk on. A talkie, like in the old days. So yeah, it's a little bit of everything. Fantastic. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to make sure everybody knew why you were here, but when, when Dan couldn't be here, I just needed, I wanted to change things up and have a different dynamic. So maybe I can just pop up behind you guys occasionally. Anyway. Like, <laughs> I'm so glad. Hello. I'm so glad that Lori could do it. But Thanks. next I wanted to, and you, and you, we have Rick Wasserman here in the studio, and, and later Lori is going to get to... I'm just going to let him loose. Right? Like, Lori, Rick, ah, just <laughs> done. I, I can just, I'm done. I, I just walk out of here. Get out. Because you guys, you guys are going to let you guys loose. But there is, a, there is a tech question that came in by email, and I wanted to address this. This is a really geeky one. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Real geeky. Ooh. George will <laughs> like that. Here Yay. We go. This one came in from Richard Hercher. He says, hi, guys. I have a tech question for you. Uh, with Fron... Fraunhofer ceasing license distribution for the MP3 codec and is not open sourcing it for software developers. How do you think it is going to play out long term for the VO industry? Okay, hang on. Let me let me let me unpack this a little bit. (laughs) In my experience, you know those Fraunhofers. How how you Fraunhofer's Well, the MP3s are very tricky, I tell you. (laughs) Bruja. I think you should answer that, George. Yes, I do. This will. one's for you. I certainly will. Um, f- if, if you have software that makes MP3s, chances are the company that makes the software, t- Pro Tools, for example, has to pay a license fee to be allowed to make MP3s. I see. It's not just free. This company, Fraunhofer, that invented MP3 and code. Fraunhofer! Oh. Fraunhofer! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't MP3, <laughs> invented MP3 encoding 20-something years ago. Um, they own the license on it. The thing is, they're not the only ones that have an MP3 encoding codec. There's another company called... Schlagenschlagen! Very, sla- very, <laughs> very sadly, they have an acronym name, and that is LAME. Schlugischlagis. I wish it was something that good. LAME. Lame oh, encoder, gosh. L-A-M-E, which do I don't know what it stands for. marketing thing with the in-game They really do. Sorry. So there are alternatives out there. So f- basically what he's asking is because Fran Hoffer does no longer, no longer wants to give people f- access to their MP3 encoder. I don't know what this means for the industry. I don't know what this means for software that uses it. But I think that what it means is they're going to start using competitors' technologies like this one called Lame. Mm-hmm. If you're using Twisted Wave, um, it, Twisted Wave uses the Lame codec to make mp3s and it works really really well same with audacity it also uses this or sound codec. studio if you're really old school and you're really tech challenged like me yeah which is kind of like twisted wave before there was twisted wave right yeah. and you're like just stay on that Lori, so yeah, you don't yeah. throw equipment around the house or the booth because that's <laughs> yeah, what i do yeah. that. i'm like <laughs> but yeah, it ends up hoggish lagging and gets thrown across the room it happens. but i don't do that anymore never never um, every uh, Richard goes on here. Every source I know says, "Do not ever send demos or auditions as AAC MP4 audio or as Wave MP3." A- and woe betide the AIFF users. This is some interesting Ooh. ways of writing we have. Hagefliegen. <laughs> Only use MP3. I know ah, this isn't a good. the sky is falling moment, but what do you see as the road map for removing away from this 15 year old standard? And can I dust off that Apple lo- lossless codec <laughs> yet? Or should I start figuring out how to patch Og Vorbis into iTunes iPhone? Whoa, Richard. Richard loves the show, but he asked probably one of the geekiest questions we've ever tried say, to tackle. I going to say, you have to like, that's cool and it's show. geeky and I have to understand it. So <laughs> ungeek it. I'm going to try to ungeek cool. this a little bit more. I started okay. ungeeking a little bit, but... Okay. So, Og Vorbis, okay, so there are a lot of ways to take audio, a WAV file, and smoosh it down into a smaller size so we can send it by email. Right. MP3 is the most popular one. It has been for a really long time. But there are other ways of doing it. AAC is another method. Uh, There's a thing called the Apple Lossless Codec, which is another method. And there is what's called an open source one. Open source meaning 
Anybody can use it without paying a license. Anybody's allowed to access it. Mm -hmm. And it's called Og Vorbis. I don't know why. Og Vorbis. So to me, this, sound like to me moving away from MP3 sending as a means to send out auditions and everything is, is probably as difficult as getting people to stop using ISDN. Right. I mean, it is completely part of the workflow of how everything is done. And getting uh, having a seed change where everything changes overnight, it's not. It's just not going right. to happen. It's going to take something major to happen where MP3s it's just like Congress. break. It's just going to yes. take off for everybody to agree and actually have change happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, see? So, that I see. Once you put it in that terms, I'm like, oh, I got now it. Now I get it. Totally now, get now it. Now we're on the same page. So MP3 is not probably going to go away because there are other ways to make MP3s, namely lame. But if they sue lame and say, hey, you're not allowed to make MP3s, MP3s so anymore because you're lame. MP3s anymore because you're lame for copying right. us, then you are going to have to find another way to do this industry. I'm talking to you, industry. Um, and there are so many other technologies. Next time you open your your software, do, do you still have a picture of my screen, uh, Andrew, that you can source? I think I, no, maybe I closed that. Yeah, I closed it. I don't have that open anymore. If you open any software like Twisted Wave or Audition, when you look at the list of possible file formats, mm -hmm. it's a pretty big list, yeah. right? There's a lot of other ways to save audio files. So it's just going to take somebody to say, I want to start having you send files in this new format. Right, and, we're and then all, all of a sudden it'll just, catch on. And Yeah, it's not like we all have to buy new tools. Thank the, the, These systems are already built into our, to the software we already use. It's just a matter of adapting to something new. Yeah. That's, that's all I'm really still is. on Sound Studio, and you're like, just press MP3. I'm like, okay, I got it, I got it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the bottom line is voice actors and anybody creative does not want to know how the sausage is being made. Except for like like Bo Weaver and like a lot of people are really super techie guys that are like so good at that. Yeah. And and, and women who are really good at that. I, I'm just, yeah, my are. brain is like, huh? I just talk and make funny voices and send it off. Yeah, I mean, we, we just want tools that we know are going to work yeah. when we need them to work, that we can Reliable. count on and we don't have to get into the, under the hood to make them work. Correct. You know, that's my job is, to get under the hood when poss when necessary, but basically make it so the voice actor never has to get under the hood. They right. just can turn on the mic, hit record, and they can count on the file that they've recorded being intact right. and ready to Levels send. are set to Levels and everything's set, ready yeah. to go. I mean, yeah. You know, and there are tools coming out all the time that are making that easier. There's a I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. There's a new audio interface kind of like the Apogee one like mm -hmm. you use or Rick uses uh, uh, the UH7000 by Tascam and there's all these technologies, but there's a new one that came out that has true automatic recording level. Wow. And it's not like the crappy video camera style auto level where when you get real loud, it squashes it down yeah. and then the noise floor comes up and it gets really hissy and does that garbage. No, it, it, it actually truly controls the gain for you. So That's you very just cool. open the program and turn on your mic and you never have to think about setting your mic levels. That would be good for that me. That is really I wouldn't awesome. throw that across the room. No. So far, it's a $1,000 technology. It's a $1,000 box that does this, made by Yellow Tech, German, another German company. Yellow uh, Tech, They're yes. very intelligent over there. Um, wow, it's impressive. It's really, really cool technology. I saw it at NAB. I covered, the, covered it at NAB. When that technology becomes a little bit more widespread and becomes more accessible, then we'll, we, we, we won't have to that'll parts the, with that'll gain be the thing. Yeah, that'll it'll be, be so is. nice. I mean... I don't, as an engineer, my job is to set the game. That's one of my jobs. Yeah. As a voice actor, your job is to act. And the second, the setting of the mic game becomes part of your, I have to do this. And then the acting has to be taken sort of out of the moment. And you're like, ah. Yeah. It's really hard to be a great actor and also try to, and then turn off the, you have to have two sides of the brain and you flick a switch back yeah. and forth. My engineer brain, my acting brain, engineering brain. I'm trying to do more and more. My part in this whole thing is to do more and more. So the actor has to do less of the engineering more of the acting yeah. but at the same time still producing really high quality audio yeah it's that's that's what i think that my job is um and speaking of my job that's what i do and if you want to get a hold of me and learn more audio production technique learn how to get your mic sounding great deal with technical issues or design a record entire recording studio mm -hmm. from the ground up i'm over at edgestudiotechnology.com um and you can jump over there and there's a lot of different ways i can help you out so go give that a look well, we're going to take another break here, and uh, we're going to come back with Rick and Lori together over on the guest it's set. It's Dan Leonard, but <sighs> I'll let it slide. It's in my notes, but every time I look at you, I just, I, I'm not a good actor. 
clearly not a good actor. I, I, I'm not good kidding. at sustaining <laughs> disbelief. But uh, anyway, we're going to be right back with here, with, right here with Lori and Rick right after this. Pain, a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Are you confused about how to set up a... Hiya, VO friends. You say you ain't booked a VO gig in seven years? And your demo is so old that you can hear the clicks from the stock music records? And you hear so much tape hiss that you run to the sink to see if the faucet is running? And the engineer used so much echo on your voice that it sounds like it was recorded in the Grand Canyon? And the scripts seem a bit dated, too. Advertising the new and improved 1938 Plymouth Road King? <gasps> Is that what's been troubling you, Bunky? Well, lift your head up high and take a walk in the sun. Your demo can be killer, too. Just contact Uncle Roy at atlandproductions.com and book yourself a shiny new killer demo. Show your stick to and show the world. You'll never give up, never give up, never give up. That dream. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> hey, everybody. I want to do a little spot here for one of our great sponsors, and that is vo to go go And that is a, a product and company and coaching program by David H. Lawrence the 17th. And he's got a little message for you guys here. He says, and let me turn off the popping bubble sound that I hear in my headphones. I hope that takes care of it. Um, sorry guys. Um, if you're a VO actor who also works on camera or would like to add on camera acting to your portfolio, here's a great way to master the studio and performance techniques you need to, to do to work on camera. And the content will take advantage of all you know about working on mic. It's called Camera Ready You, and it's been created by vo to gos David H. Lawrence, the 17th. He's pretty well known in the VO industry, but he's also a seasoned TV and film actor, and he will share all the knowledge he's gained working on camera in this class. Working on camera can be deceptively hard, but David's put together a special report called The Top 5 Mistakes People Make on Camera and How to Fix Them. It's absolutely free. It totally, totally is free. And to get it, just text on camera, the word on camera, to 44222 on any smartphone or messaging device. Jeez, David, getting sophisticated. You probably have unlimited text messaging on your phone, but standard messaging rates apply. What will you learn? How to set up your studio, your lights, your camera, your mic, how to tape on-camera auditions, how to master business presentations, video podcasts like this one here, online instructions and lessons, marketing videos, and more. You'll learn how to shine on camera. Don't know which camera to use? Don't know which lavalier or boom mic to buy? Don't know what to do with your hands or your eyes? No worries. Camera ready. You will. We will. Cut, camera ready. You. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll cover all of that. Become an on-camera actor as well as VO talent with Camera Ready. You. Again, that free top five mistakes people make on camera and how to fix them. Report and get that on the list on your smartphone. You can get it texted you to, to you by texting on camera to four four two two two. That's all one word, on camera to 44222, and get ready for Camera Ready You. That's all one word, on camera to 44222. We'll be right back here with Lori Allen and Rick Wasserman right after this.
You are competing for work with other voice talents, and every one of them has a powerful, unique, engaging voice demo. Your voice demo needs to stand out from the crowd in an unforgettable way. Now it can. Vizzy Visual Voice Demos take your awesome voice demo and add a visual element, reinforcing your brand. Your demo will leave a lasting impression because it stimulates two senses instead of just one. Your voice is your livelihood. You need an effective demo to open doors of opportunity. Blow those doors down with a busy wow. visual it's voice it's demo. Good. Visit busydemos.com for more information. Yes. Your oh, audio oh, demo oh, never oh, looked oh, so good. Oh, Take oh, your oh, voice oh, demos oh, to the next oh, level, oh, a oh, visual oh, yeah. level, with busy visual voice demos. Mention Voice Over Body Shop and get an additional 10% off. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Hi. 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 Rick Wasserman, Lori Allen. Hey, Lori. I'm how Dan are you? Leonard. I just keep getting confused. Dan, Lori. Dan Leonard. No, we have Lori. the same agent, and we were talking about this before. I know. Uh, we've seen. I've seen you plenty of times right. at the agency. We've not spoken a word. I don't think. You know what? That's that sounds a little crazy. I'm sure we've read together over the years. I'm uncomfortable. I'm fairly antisocial. This is as you much are? as I'm ever going to talk. You're very social here. This just is here. Crazy. Only in this room. Only in this room because there's dogs and and I've had a beer and you've had a beer. No, <laughs> you have not had a beer. Um, so so tell me, so it seems like we actually have a lot in common. Yes. Because we're both like theater geeks. I think that's fair to say, right? Ouch. No, right? yeah, uh, proudly, proudly. Right, because I was looking at your Card resume. carrying, badge wearing. Card yes. carrying, like thespian, like woohoo. Go, go, go. Right? So, so tell us where you went to college. I uh, went theater to undergrad theater. at mm -hmm. St. Joe's, so the Jesuit school. Mm hmm. And then I remembered I was Jewish, and then I transferred to <laughs> Temple. T for Temple U, University. Hey. Uh, and uh, after that, I went to grad school at UMKC, University of Missouri, Kansas City. Nice. I got my MFA. Right. Where I got my MFA. And your MFA, hair flip in the theater. <coughs> yes, in right, the theater. Which is a couple of words, the theater. The theater. Right, right, right. And so, and then, so how did you sort of make your segue from the theater and everything like that into voiceovers? Like my experience, of course, is I thought it would be a nice day job. Wow. Which I'm so grateful. Great That's food, amazing. So. But you were kind of like genetically built for this. I, I mean, was. You started, it was like, good night, so Lori. This is we'll like see a, you in the morning at This at is nine, like, a, you know. like a Sammy Davis Jr. thing. Like right. he was on the road performing at a very yes. young age. It's what he knew and he became this thing. Right. And that's what you are. You're right, one of exactly. these things now. I want to be uh, an ophthalmologist. No. No. So you, you will not. You'll make funny voices. No, you'll make crazy in a, voices. In a box. Uh, <laughs> I, yes, I was in grad school. Now, my voice changed, I think, when I was in the third grade or something. It so just the teachers dropped. were like, <laughs> and you were like 10. Sorry, that sounds Most terrible. Of but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was just weird. And I think we all noticed it when we had to say Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> and I was a, well over an octave down. Right. Uh, but I didn't do anything about it. And I did a whole bunch of theater. So I did all my theater stuff. And then when I was in graduate school, we had like a weekend or a week-long course with a guy from the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, uh, Jeffrey Dreisbach, terrific guy. And we kind of just wet our whistle with voiceover. Right. In a weekend, we made our demos on cassette. Cassettes are these small plastic things with two reels on them. You can play them in like a Walkman or a boombox. And for you kids out there, you might want to Google that, a boombox. Walkman. Okay. Look it up. Anyway. On the interweb. So uh, so we made our demo. I go to New York. I get my agent. I'm doing on-camera commercials. I'm, right. I'm acting and stuff like that. And uh, I talked about this last time, but let me say it again because yeah. it's really cool. I was uh, I was the Zest Soap guy. Oh, my gosh. You camera. were. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. That was me. That's uh, I had to wax my chest, and it was an ugly scene. And I saw him without a shirt on, ladies, so I'm just saying... Ladies and gentlemen, it's worth, you know, maybe going back and looking at your Zest commercials. I did, I did have a beer, okay. I said. So, uh, yeah, so I went to New York, and I was doing yeah. all that work. And I, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I was in my agent's, you know, conference room mm -hmm. signing contracts for yeah. on-camera commercials, and the voiceover agent walked by the office. And so Jason Marks, we... who is still my manager yes. today, yeah, yeah. Uh, peeked his head in and he said, do you do voiceover? And I went, uh-uh. And he said, do we represent you? And I said, uh-huh. And he went, come here, come here. And pulled me out and stuck me in a booth. And it's been that way ever since. And I, by the way, I auditioned for six months and nothing. Not wow. a sausage, then, nothing at all. And then the day came. So I was in The Lion King at the time. On and, Broadway. On Broadway. Right, that's how we say it. That's real, right. On Broadway. Exactly. Whenever right. you're near to the theater, the we theater, say Broadway. Broadway, yes. Exactly. Uh, and the booth engineer was out that day. And... An assistant 
was managing the booth. A guy I adored named Stuart Nacht. Great guy. And he said, so I did this thing. He said, you have an audition. I said, great. He goes, it's a promo. I went, ah, ah. what sort of thing is that? And he went, right. it's like a commercial for a TV show. So I went and I read it and he went, you're in Lion King, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, do it like Scar. <gasps> do nice. it like Scar. And I went, okay. And I did, I booked it. It was my first job and it was the voice. It was a campaign voice for a new show on HBO nice. at the time, which was called The Wire. Yes, I love The Wire. My so dear friend Michael Kostroffis, it's one yeah. of the best television shows ever created. So that's how I kind of got into it. Right. So then that leads me to such, I think, what's a great question that a lot of people like to know and hear, and especially with the real read sound right now that, yes. for me, trips people up when I'm coaching and stuff, and we'll get to that in a second, too, is so what do you think about voice acting versus, oh, I just have a really cool voice, right? So Yes, I think both of those things can exist, mm -hmm. but you can't coach someone to have a great voice. That's the kind of thing you have to walk in with. I think of it like modeling. Mm -hmm. Like you can, you can stand on the street and see someone staggeringly gorgeous walk down the street. They're not doing anything. They're just born and bred. Right. That, that's just what they look like. Can they walk a catwalk? It doesn't matter. Can they take a picture? It doesn't matter. They are so stunningly beautiful. It doesn't matter. But most of us are not like that. And I can't teach you how to be like that. But I can teach you skills to work with your voice and help with your read and help you audition and help you book and know what to do with tech and in your booth and all those right. things. So I teach for everybody else. Right. <laughs> Not for the point zero 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 one percent of the people who just have unbelievably gorgeous voices. It doesn't matter what they say. They can read the phone book and the, the book. But let me ask you something. So doing, I think we're uh, similar in this way in terms of promo and commercial and animation and stuff that uh, for me, I think that it's, it's a great thing to be able to be a voice actor, to be a storyteller. And it seems like with your background, obviously that has propelled you into you know, great success, knock on wood, continued, yes, thank right? You. Yeah. And and also then to be able to to have a successful coaching, workable, right? So tell us a bookable. little bit about that. Excuse me, I'm so sorry, bookable. Bookable. B O uh, yeah, bookable. 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 So then you're sort of a full you know, a full shop there, right? A one man stop. So people can coach with you sort of on their route to making a demo. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And in fact that's what happened. For a long time we were just coaching. Mm -hmm. We're just coaching and coaching and coaching. And then at some point with, with our clients, it was like, so the next thing you need to do now make is go make a demo. Well, how, how do we do, do that? that? No, no, no. Bye. You know, which I felt horrible. It felt like I was just leaving felt people horrible. hanging. Well, it felt, the East Coast, I felt horrible. I felt horrible. It was horrible. Gave me angina. I felt horrible. <laughs> Ajita. Right. Ajita, Ajita, all of it. I just felt sick inside. <sighs> so anyway, yes, yeah, that's, yes. that's how it was. It was awful. So then I started thinking, well, why, why shouldn't we make demos? Right. And I got some uh, incredible help. I got a wonderful producer and all that stuff. And now we make demos. So I, yeah. now I feel like I can kind of carry them right. through the next steps. Right. And I do that as well. I'm sure we come. I'd I, it's funny. I should come to yes. have like a demo con Let's concert. Do. Consultation with you, and you can come to me, and we can see how that goes. Great. Um, so, tell me, I have some questions for you. Oh. Um, so, just random business things. So, 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 holler me back here. Uh, does one need a website? Does one need a website? Yes. If you're a voiceover artist, a uh, actor. What, let me just ask you this right. first. Do you? What do you call us? Are we voice actors or voice artists? What are we? Hmm. 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 What do you call us? Because that's Let's been see. on my mind for a while. That's for a long time, I was calling myself a, voice a voiceover actor. performer. Right, a voiceover. Because um, I felt funny after after voice being voice in Richard voice. III to go on and say, and when I do right. promos, I'm acting. Right. I just felt awkward I'm about a voice, it. I say I'm a voice actor. You're a voice actor, right? I'm a voice actor. I have come to the point now where I can say that, but it's very recent. Right. I've always you feel felt kind of pompous. Yeah, I felt like, well, yeah, there's the hair flip again. I, the I hair, feel like mm -hmm. I'm a voice actor. What I'm doing in the booth is acting. Right. And I think a lot of our friends that are outside the business will be like, my friend wants to get into voiceovers and you're a voiceover person. Right. And then you have to, it's like, you don't have to, I don't have to feel pompous by saying it's a voice actor. It's just, it's sort of, let's just keep it across the yes. board. It's a voice actor. Listen, so that's cool. It's storytelling, right. right? So you could tell a story in point shoes on a stage and you could do it on TV and you right. could do it with acrylics on canvas and it's right. just a Another vehicle to tell a story, this time just your voice. Right. So and you yes, only have your voice, right? That's so what you got. That's why your voice So acting. it's voice acting. But if it is voice acting, then I think we must treat it like acting. And, and I think you must consider things, foundations of storytelling, circumstance, partner, objective, action, obstacle. I think you have to consider these things. Right. Which goes to then if you're an actor who has presence in the business, again, to things like um, to things like having a website and having, you know, just some of those uh, those uh, social media skills and all those acumens of things like that. Yeah. So, so do you do you need a website? I'm not entirely sure. I have one kind of as like um like a parking lot uh, exactly. on the web. So Where if I give somebody goes. my card and they go to my website, they can hear stuff I've done in the past. Right. But I don't really know if casting directors 
Google me and try to find my right. voice, or do they just get in touch with my agent? Now, if you don't have an agent, right. it might be very, very important, important just to have your demos up there, right. to have About your name. your demos, Thank you. how to contact you. I think that's very important to have a little Lori bit of Allen. web presence. Yes. I always think that's important. Um, so what about, so I think in terms of being an actor, taking some simple acting classes, um, and I've always been a big proponent. Uh, I was in the ground link, so I love that. Um, improvising, so important, right? And you, you tell me why improvising is so important. Well, I think the only way you can really survive, especially here in Los Angeles, but in the voiceover market, is by embracing your voice mm -hmm. and your read. Embrace them. They are, it's your voice. It's the sound that kind of comes out of your instrument. Right? It's not like anybody else's. Don't try to sound like me. I get that a lot. Oh, I would book a lot if I sounded like you. No, you won't. I book my stuff. Right. You book You'll yours. book your stuff because I don't sound like you. Right. So embrace how you sound, no matter how you sound. Embrace it. And your read as well. That is your opinions and your sense of humor. Your, your point likes of it, view. Your point of view, your eccentricities, your regionalisms, what makes you unique. All that. Embrace that. And that is how you stick around. That, right. And don't you think it also makes you, first of all, it makes you look good. I always think it makes, I know for a fact it makes you look good for the client because then they get to show up and be like, look at that. I can make her do backflips. I can make her look like she just, you know, <laughs> just rode a pony. She sounds like she's five inches, you know, taller than she was before in the last take. Yeah. Um, and also it makes you sharp on your feet. I mean, it makes you just be able to just, can we just do three in a row? Do you want anything? different no just want you to do something different yeah okay that's you know, why i think it comes in handy the most for abcs yeah everybody knows what they are and my famous story about yep. abcs is when i was doing uh the wire mm -hmm. so i finished the first session by the skin of my teeth because right. i don't know what i'm doing really i'm just doing scar you know i, I don't right. really know what else to do uh and at the end they said okay we need some title reads give us an abc mm -hmm. and i went ah a abc you want an abc okay uh <clears throat> now you want it I'll give it to you now. Okay. I'm doing ABC. No, you don't want that. You don't want me to say ABC at all. That's not what you want. What you want me to say <laughs> is the title three times with, you know, variation, Variations. which I completely screwed up. Uh, but, I, but I clearly know that now. But that's where improv can really come in yeah. handy. Now, I have, by the way, some ABC templates in my pocket always. Ooh, do like, tell. Okay, so listen. Like the fr my A take will always be kind of my gut read. If right. no one directed me, no one told me anything, this is what I would do. That's my A read. Okay. My B read might be flatter. My C read might be my sexier read or something like Ooh, that. Okay. But I have a couple templates in my pocket. What about for like if it was the Laurie Allen show? How would you would you give us a It's all sexy after that. I have nowhere to go after that. Sexy, sexy, sexy. Or I'm sexiest. Sex and back. Wow, wow. Okay. So I have a question since I'm so technically challenged. What do you think you need in your booth? Like how much like I'm I just I'm like, George, I'm throwing things again. <laughs> um so I how do is, that too. Right. So I'm yeah. just that's just not my thing. I I wish I were, and then I just sort of come to like a nice peaceful place of acceptance. So how tech savvy does one need to be? Well you were saying like guys like Bo Weaver have been very helpful for guys like mm -hmm. me. He's the one who said twisted wave and we all went, mm, okay. okay. Yeah, if you say so. Sure. Um George, of course, you know, we all owe so much to because I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. And by the way, a lot of people who are not calling George don't know anything. Right. Call Listen, George. Call Makes George. So much or, call George because really what you're doing ultimately is you're wasting money. Don't That's do that. That's actually yeah. very true. Don't do that. Don't, I mean, because you can go on Amazon or you can watch a YouTube clip and someone will say, well, this is the equipment you need to start your own booth. And, and don't you think also that then you're sending in, you're sending in auditions and now with the saturation of folks and that's not a bad thing it just means there are more people doing voiceovers with more um, uh, accessibility to voices one two three voices.com agents non-agents union non-union just a plethora more people than when i first came up and probably sure. you too right absolutely so you're competing with just this ginormous talent pool so your audition's got to sound really good i think so right i think so i want to yeah. show them it's kind of a preview right. this is what it's going to be like to work for me right listen to the voice listen to the read but listen to the quality i'm giving you i'm right. showing you the work i put in right i had a, a a client at my house today and by the way, the first time this happened, I was horribly embarrassed. So we were coaching and coaching. I get the call. We need you in the booth right now. Oh, gosh. You know, you've paid for this time, and I, I have to get in the booth right now. And I went in, and I did it, and I came out, and they were grateful. Oh, thank you. Thank you for yeah. letting me see that. Oh, right. Because everything we're coaching is fairly theoretical. Yeah. But if I'm doing it in front of you, well, now there it is. In action, and you get to you, see it happen. Ab absolutely. Do you stick people uh, in front of the mic, on mic, or are you more of the acting sort of... In your 
you know, path, your voiceover path. Yeah. If you're very, very green, never seen a microphone. What's a microphone? I've never seen one. Right. If you're very, very new or you've been dabbling for a while, you're an enthusiast, a hobbyist, enthusiast. or you're semi-professional. <laughs> I've booked a couple things. I don't have representation and so on and so on. We take people at all levels. Yeah. That's wonderful. So then speaking Oh, so how tech, you, you're saying, yeah, how much tech, tech do you have savvy. to know? Um, I know just enough tech to get by. That's how I feel about right. it. I respect it. I know it's important. It's like tax laws. I know just enough that I need to know, right. and I don't want to know anything else. Right. That's enough. My brain's full. Right. You know, so um, I'm pretty judicious with what I, I know. And of course, you know, you, I have George. Right. I have George, and I have a community of people that are very, very interested yeah. in it. So that there helps. There you go. And like you have shows like this that you can always ask questions of and forums. You yes. can find out Come everything on, it's you brilliant. need to here. What a great resource. And, um, so I have some other great questions for you. Yeah, I just want to throw my hand. I want to interject. Yeah, in your hand right oh yeah, let George say something. I just, I just oh, want to inject for a second, Lori, to say just I just want to remind everybody that do ask your questions in the chat room. If you're watching it live, yeah. If you're not noticing the chat room right below the show, type in questions you have for Rick or or for Lori tonight, and we will make sure they end up in the chat room uh, or actually in the rundown for the show. Jack uh, Jack Daniels, right yeah, over so here. Yes, we feel very lonely. So if you, don't. you know, please do send in your questions. So Lori. Back please, to your regular please. schedule okay. program. So, uh, um, ask me a question I've written for myself. I'm going to ask Rick a question that he's written for himself. <laughs> anyway, and I have fancy glasses that make me look smart. Okay. Um, so, so we've talked about his VO, a skill or an art, I think like that. Oh, one thing that's funny, I, uh, I will often tell people like, uh, in terms of movement, like I moved off mic the other day. And I was like, I've only been doing this 30 years. So, um, you know, but you want to move around, right? Especially for if it's even a promo that's like tight right on the mic or yeah. whatever, if it's intense. Like I just pretend sometimes and I try to tell my coaching clients too. It's like the mic just happens to be there, right? Because we're voice actors. But on the occasion, you have to make sure you're not like sort of in the next room. You're not really, you know, going on and off mic. Right? That, is, so, that is the balance. Yes, of course. Right? You must be yeah, like uh, on... If you're filming a television show, yeah, you got to be in the frame. Right. I appreciate you wanting to move and feel it, but right. ultimately, yeah, there's some technical concerns we have to deal with. But Absolutely. I do, like you, I move around a lot, mm -hmm. and all the movement I do in the booth, I'm very against what I'm doing right now. I'm conducting myself with my hands, right. and I'm totally against that. It's now, because listen, we're Jewish. We're exactly. Half Jewish. Oi. So I, I, listen, I know a lot of people do this. I have nothing bad against them. But for people who are starting out, I try to keep them from doing this, from conducting themselves with their right. hands. This is what I've it's been unnatural. Doing. It's not authentic. And I think it mm -hmm. will alter your performance. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but I do move my hands if it helps tell a story. Right. So if I'm doing something that's fairly sensitive or romantic, I'll put my hand on my heart. Why? It somehow connects me emotionally to something. Talking it to makes you? me feel something. Right. That mm -hmm. will come across. Just like that old thing where they say, you know, if you smile, you can hear that smile on your recording, well, which is true, true. But you can also hear everything else. You yeah. can hear yourself grimace or clench your fists or hoist your shoulders up. You can yeah. hear all that. Yeah. So yeah, I move around. Yeah. I move around. You I get move. around. I move. So then well, on an emotional we, level. You'll notice we're using a mic that's way up high tonight so that, you know, you guys don't have to think about the mic so much and you, you're able to kind of be physical and move around. Yeah. Thank you. And when you have a good studio, you, yes. you can do that. When, well, let's just put it this way. When you have a large studio. Yeah. You need that large space around mm -hmm. you to be able to have the mic that high. Absolutely. Yeah. If you've got a really small space, you can't. You don't have the luxury of that distance between you and the mic. Right. And that's but true. even in that's, my studio, which yeah. for some reason in this house is like the size of like you know, come in, it looks like a tiny little box. You still put the mic up quite. Uh, Peter Brady, you still put the <laughs> mic up kind of high. Right. So that the sound was right. really good. But so you're it on, sound like and you're on a a four, six, You're on a shotgun too. So that's another thing that's yeah. different. We used to try using a shotgun up there on that boom right, right there. Did that not work? It did so not work too well directional at all. Or? Don't pretend Much like you even direct. know what that is. Uh, <laughs> but you <laughs> bought it for a second, right? Yeah. It's uh, fairly directional. Right. It was so, way too directional. <laughs> so with uh, a lo the longevity of a voice actor, an on-camera actor, um, um, oh, but before I went, I was going to ask you how do you deal with rejection. But uh, before I was going to ask you about that, would you tell us some about some of us about your amazing experiences of being on Broadway? Broadway. Well, Broadway. Yes. yes, we talked about the theater, but not actually that, or maybe some of your favorite on camera stuff, because I know that the VO folks probably still really enjoy hearing about the live action thing. Uh, let me just tell you what happened. Yes, this is kind of fairly tragic, but it has a nice ending. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was um, I was in New York. And that's the weird thing. You go to New York, you get an agent, and you immediately go off and do regional theater. Right, so, exactly. And finally, I'm back. I was doing an off-Broadway play with Maria Irene Fornes, and it was uh, amazing. had a great experience. And I did the smartest thing I could have ever done is I agreed to be a reader for a casting company. Yes, uh, learned with, so for, much. For Jay Binder. Because now I'm sitting there, and I see both sides of the table. I learned so much, so much. So once in a while, there's an audition, and I can audition, which is great. They have an audition. They're going to do... Um, 
Broadway Bound and Biloxi Blues. Right. Not Biloxi Blues. Um, There's the third be, the trilogy. Uh, beach. Bra- uh, be, uh, Brighton Beach. Uh, mem- that one. Little Brighton Beach Memoirs. Yeah. The voice over people can't even say it. voice warm up. <laughs> Brighton Beach Memoirs. They're, Brighton Beach Memoirs. Brighton them, Beach Memoirs. They're going to do them in rep. Uh-huh. On Broadway, Linda Lavin's playing the mom. <gasps> I'm a young oh. Jewish guy. Born to do it. Ready to do it. Got to do it. Got to do so it. So I audition, audition. I make it through the first cut, second, third cut. Third cut. I come up in costume. I'm ready. It's going to be Jay Bender, a reader, and Neil Simon in the room. I walk in. I say two, three words. Neil Simon holds up his hand. He goes, I don't care for him. <gasps> okay. Ooh, dang it. Okay. What are you going to do? And I was just dumbfounded. Like, oh, oh. He didn't care for me. What does that mean? Like, no Hanukkah card? I, mean, I don't know what to make of this. He didn't care for me. And I left, and and the casting guy calls me, and he goes, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, what can I tell you? It's his show. No, you don't have to say anything. It's whatever. What are you going to do? He goes, I get you an audition for Lion King. No. What am I? I can't. What? Well, please. No. I'm so then you went to Were that show. Were you in show. it? No. I oh, okay. Because for a second. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so so I, I get an audition for that, and I mm-hmm. book that changes my life yeah. this is how it changed it i'm i'm a cater waiter because we're all cater waiters right. right i'm a cater waiter i sprayed perfume on people oh did you they didn't want it. i'm like it! and i make them smell like chanel number five whether they wanted to or not i'm like <laughs> then i just smell i'm like sorry and i sprayed in one lady's face and she was like F you and i was like eh, it's bad <laughs> so uh yeah so i find out that i booked lion king and i'm getting dressed in my polyester tux to go cater waitering and i'm thinking i'm gonna go I'm going to go. I'm still going to go. I'm right. going to go do my cater waitering, but I'm just in a fog. I'm just out of it. So I'm like a bar back, and I'm <laughs> kind of very slowly opening champagne bottles, and the bartender's like, are you okay? And I went, uh, I'm in Lion King. Aww. And they, you know, they all thought I was insane. Um, but I remember that night, I took off my tux, and I put it back in my closet, because you never know. Right. It doesn't That's mean right. your life has changed, but it did. It did change. Everything changed after that. Right. Because really I quickly. think, right, this business ebbs and flows. And one of the things I feel like I have to remind myself, and I know we all do in this room, and everyone out there that's watching and listening, this business goes up and down and ebbs and flows, right? So if you're not working on being like a happy person and having a happy and joyful and productive and 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 a life that is giving to other people, animals, whatever is your thing, you know, um, whether it's helping out the homeless and taking care of older people, whatever it is, you have to stay active and have a full, full life. You're participating in your own life, right? Because there are, there is going to be rejection. There are, there's going to be downtimes that really can get you really down. And you're like, you have to remember that there, um, there are other things you can do to supplement your income. There's other ways to be of Absolutely. service. There's other ways to, right? So how do you deal with Up high. I, high five, Amen. Right? This is great. Yes. So how are there other ways that you would encourage yourself, me, anybody out there watching, listening to deal with those times that are, I don't even want to call them rejection because it's not rejection, but those times when they're the ebbs and flows and yeah. better down and you're like, oh my gosh. Can I answer? Yes. Okay. Jesus, I, I, you please? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to establish an aesthetic between your personal life and your career. I mm-hmm. think that's important. There's a lot of people, especially in the arts, who say acting is my life and singing is my life and voiceover is my life. And I don't think it should be. I think it should be part of your life and mm-hmm. I think it should be important in mm-hmm. your life, but you should have your life and then you should have your career. And I think it's important to have that to establish that, that difference in your life so you can be very satisfied with your family and yes. your friends and your loved one and your beliefs and those things that you hold. And then you have your career. So if one falters, not everything falls down. It's right. not a big you know house of cards that comes right. down. And you have something to draw on for your Absolutely. storytelling, for your voice acting, right? That's right. right. I, and yeah, that's exactly right. right. Th- this happened to me, I remember, very, very long ago in an acting class. We were doing... Um, Scenes from the Crucible. You're gonna love this. We're doing scenes from the Crucible, and uh, I say something. I'm Reverend Hale, the Jew. I come out and I say a couple lines, and the director stops me and says, "Where were you just before this?" And I went stage left, and they went, "No, no, 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 no. Where was?" I went, "Oh, no, no, no. I get it. I get it. Where was Hale?" before this and it was like a door open yeah. to a hallway that had a thousand other doors right. and I was on fire and after class I said well, what can I do I mean should I take another acting class and wh- what do I do next and she was great she said yeah take another acting class but don't just take acting classes because all you'll be prepared to do if that's what you do is you're only going to be prepared to tell the story of an actor you'll only be able to play an actor you have to learn science and math and politics and religion you have to know all those things so like you say so you have the fodder fuel, right. yeah you have yeah. fuel for your stories and of course that's true right. go travel go make friends go get your heart broken go fall in love you yep. got to do all those things yep. go do those things 
now. Well, after the after the break. Actually. After the break. So we're going to go talk um, to talk to Rick some more and, and have a, a, a beverage, and uh, we'll see you guys back in just a minute. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Business. That good old fashioned actor. Hey, Paul, I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on you. This is VOBS. Here we are inside the bagel. Sounds a little roomy. I'm just ad living. The ad lib light was on, you know? <laughs> All right. Learning never ends. You continue to grow. Edge Studio has grown. Pursue multiple disciplines in tandem and grow your career. We've added new courses in a new curriculum. We pick the best coaches from the community of working voice actors. A new technology division, engineering and consulting, led by George Whittem. Follow your dream. Sign up for advanced learning or register for an introduction to voice acting or foundation studies program. See it all now at the new edgestudio.com. <laughs> and we're back. Hey, we are back. I have to do a commercial, though. Oh, sorry. Oh, George is doing a commercial. I got to do a commercial. Scale plus 10, I say. Yeah, it's very, very <laughs> right. important. Overscale. This is the chance. This is the time we have on the show. We get to talk about our buddy Harlan Hogan and voiceover essentials and all of the great stuff he sells over there, like his flashing, color changing, super duper dynamic, amazing voiceover recording sign, which we have on the wall of our studio. You guys have seen it before. It's a really cool product and actually there it is it's in the shot -da! that's the voice or recording sign you can change the color the speed of the flashing and the controller is rf wireless so you can have that sign outside your door and the controller will control it so this is a way to tell your family in a fun flashy way to show up <laughs> <laughs> when you're recording <laughs> uh -huh. um, but before i go i just want to uh, harlan did say he'd love to encourage the viewers to visit voiceoveressentials.com and sign up for the subscription list with their email. It's safe and secure, what is and it? they'll get exclusive discounts and offers and free downloads throughout the year. We'll be announcing an unprecedented deal this week. Uh, that deal is worth 60 bucks. It's a secret, but if you are planning on any summertime travel, you won't want to miss this one. So I want, really want to thank Harlan for uh, you know supporting our show. If you want to tell Harlan that you came from us, just go to the bottom of VOBS.TV, scroll to the very bottom. There's a picture of Harlan at the at the at his famous Porta Booth voiceover booth. Click on that. It'll take you to his website. That way he'll know that you came from us. And it's our way of letting him know that he was discovered on VOBS. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with our wrap-up with Lori and Rick. Minus four, are we at minus four dB? We're at minus four dB on VOBS. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Business. That good old fashioned actor. Hey, Paul, I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on you. This is VOBS. So I was. So I'm very excited to ask you about your process of coaching, but yes. I happen to know that you are a puppeteer. Uh, yeah. I, right? A professional stage, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, when you do stage Combatant. Writing? Combatant. Yeah. I did a show called Reefer Madness where we had a stage oh, yeah, sure. who came, and that's why I have a bad neck and whatever. Oh, Not dear. because of Rick Sordley, who I love. Super. Do, do you um, know Rick Sordley? He's a god. He's amazing. He's a god. Oh, my God, so you know him. Okay, yeah. so wonderful. Um, you're a makeup artist. You're a fire eater. You're a magician. Yes. Are you Jesus too? I, I mean, am what the heck? a bit, a okay. bit. So, is there any like quick magic trick that you want to just teach everybody? Just because, come on, you got to show everybody like one quick thing, right? Uh, come on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I got right? It. I no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Okay, I'll do it. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay. Uh, everybody can follow along and do this too. Okay. Hold your hands out like this. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing in your hands. Nothing in my hands. Uh, I talk for a living. You don't have to do it too, George. Just relax. Okay. He's old, that he has hands. soft hands. <clears throat> he has his hand lotion, oh. I think, or something. Uh, okay, sorry. Stretch. So I, I talk all day mm -hmm. doing voiceover, so I'm not going to talk during this. Okay. Okay. Here we go.
Gosh. Up. Whoa! <laughs> Man, I'm glad I asked you that. Yeah. I just hope that your roof of your mouth is okay. Oh my gosh. No wonder, oh my God. Yay! Yay! That's awesome. So talk about having a lot of experience under your belt that you can bring to your, yeah, to your life when and you're it recording. Makes, and, and it's fun and it's interesting and there is that. You know, we were talking, you had mentioned it before about rejection. Mm -hmm. Acting, performing arts, there's a lot of right. rejection in it, but maybe not as much as voiceover. Because if you're lucky enough to have 10, 12 auditions a day, chances are you're not going to book them. All right, but what if you don't? Right? Let's be real, right? Yeah. For, 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 for me, for women in voiceover, for folks very out tough, there. Very tough right? for women. Uh, unnecessarily tough for women, and I feel bad. But uh, what do you do? How do you deal with rejection? That's a real question because I don't know. The fact is, I'd like to say that over time you build a callus and it gets easier, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It's hard for me. I, I, I don't, I, I'm trying to do my best work and I, I want to do well for me and for my family, but certainly for the product. I want to tell the richest right. story. And it, it's hard not to take it personally because this is not a ledger I'm turning exactly in at the end of the right. day. To not take it personally, yeah. to join a workout group. And again, I always go back to leading a full life. Yeah. And the minute that I that you're coaching more or being of service to somebody else, like somehow you, you kind of get back into your body and your groove and you don't think of somebody outside of yourself to validate you. And then you're like, oh, that's right. I can only bring, like you said earlier, I can only bring me and my voice that's it. legitimately that's and otherwise what to whatever it is. So so tell us more, uh, speak on that note about your coaching. And so like, let's say I was signing up for your yeah, so bookable. How does it go? Obviously, the first thing we do is we give you kind of a, an intake questionnaire. It's like a mm -hmm. hospital. But we find out where you are and what you're looking to do, what your goals are, because um, everyone's got different goals, and I don't mm -hmm. want to assume anything. Then we can have a couple conversations. The first session we have is always discounted. But basically, I'm going to lay down, especially if you have zero background, that is no performing arts, no acting background. Can, can you do voiceover? Yeah, you can. But you're going to need to know some things. You're going to need to learn some things. And so and what it, do you teach those folks? So the first example? thing I tell them is I tell them the difference between your voice and your read. We make sure that's mm. very clear. The next thing we talk about is this is something that I have come up with, but I think it's probably fairly universal, that I like to think of voiceover being done in three phases. And the first phase I call work. It's outside the booth. Mm -hmm. It's when you run your process. It's when you ask yourselves all your questions. If this was theater, it would be rehearsal. It'd be dramaturgy, right? It'd be mm -hmm. that time. You do all your work, make all of your notes, do all the work outside of the booth so that in phase two, you can go in the booth and play. We do the work, so we have the luxury of just, just playing. Throw it away. I'm not thinking in there. I'm not it's, doing it's any more work. Somehow, I'm not trying to remember it. I'm just doing it. That's phase two. And then phase three, which is just as important as two and one, is listening back, reviewing, editing, and calibrating. Because you might be in that booth and think to yourself, well, my action here is to seduce. But when you come out and you listen to the playback, it sounds like you're leching or something like, right. ooh, something's off. I need to calibrate my voice to my ear. And I think that's a very important step, especially if you're not used to hearing yourself. Right. Yeah, you got to learn to do that. That's great. And so then moving forward, then... Then we learn. Mm -hmm. Then we go phase by phase. First phase. I take it from the moment you are handed a piece of copy or script. What do you do? Right. And I say any artist must have a process. It doesn't have to be mine. Right. But you got to have one. A series of scaffolded questions that will ensure that you read richly, vividly, specifically, and you centric, right, uh, gives you the best story that you can tell. Right. That's wonderful. Yeah. So if folks want to coach with you and or get their demo done, where can we find you? BookableVO.com. That's wonderful. BookableVO.com. And also, so for the on-camera side, for your live action side, um, since I did get to see you shirtless, thank goodness, um, whew, uh, you're doing a play, right? So you've been I working am. out a lot. So what did it tell us about? I am, yeah. So this summer, and this is great too. This is another thing that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have decided to... Like you, I was I, I was performing, and then I thought, I know, I'll make some money on the side doing a little voiceover. And that just kind of turned around. Right. Um, right? And I hadn't been on stage in years and years, and I hadn't done any television shows in years and years because I'm the voice of a network and some other things, and it gets busy. Right. Uh, so I decided I'm just going to have to do it. I've just got to find a way. I don't want to look back in, you know, 20, 30 years and go, I, I, I saw the inside of a booth, like a tortoise, right. you know, it's a, that thing lives 200 years, but it's staring at a brick wall, right. you know, and right. I thought that's not the way to live. Is that a life lived? I don't think so. Right. So I said, I'm going to do a summer of theater. So 
I go to this wonderful theater called Creed Repertory Theater in Creed, Colorado. Cool. It's the, it does. It's one of the few true repertory theaters left take, in the like, country. Take a voiceover bus, like the VOBS. Take the VOBUS. Like, US. That'd be a heck of a bus, right? Yeah. Can be like Colorado's right. awesome. They do four or five shows in mm -hmm. rep, same cast. It's, mm -hmm. it's very demanding. I, last summer, I did one show. In, that's all I could, had time for. Right. I did Private Lives. Oh, how fun. It was great. Uh, and then this summer, I'm doing two shows. I'm doing Arsenic and Old Lace, which I've mm -hmm. never done. And My I, mom is like, I've done that play like 47 times. Everyone's done, done it. Done I've, it. Never, I've never done it. Uh, and I'm doing Tally's Folly, Lanford Wilson, oh Pulitzer Prize winning. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. It's two people on stage for 97 minutes, nonstop, in the round. And what's interesting, well, at wow. least for me, is no one's going to care about this, but you know, take a nap for a little bit. Um, I, I have been in dramas and comedies yeah. and musicals but this is a romance Aww. and i've never been in one before so it's new territory for right. me and i love that so i'm very very excited that's about wonderful it. yeah um thank you for filling us in and that's great so we're going to take a little field trip everybody i guess to colorado this summer so come that's on easy. big partridge family bus george i'm i'm on board you're on yes. board okay um so i want to hear so uh, my whole family is obsessed with walking dead and so you know i get a lot of groupies for things like spongebob mm -hmm. but now i'm a groupie for I want to hear. Do I have time to um, call my sister and see if we'll do a live message really quick? <laughs> yeah, everybody sure. just stand by. Okay. While you're doing that, do you I'm guys gonna, mind? While you're doing that, I'm going to find some questions for Rick that have oh, come. Oh, good. Okay, you great, you great. get your sister on the phone, okay, and, great. and I'm awesome. going to multitask here. Awesome. And grab some questions. Um, one of the first questions that came up tonight came in from where'd it go? Oh, from the low bass man. That's yeah. the guy's name. Hey, baby. Um, question: I have a fairly strong Southern dialect. Mm. Should I work to completely neutralize it or embrace it? Absolutely not embrace it. Like I said before, that is you. You have this Southern dialect. Now, the way I like to think about it is any kind of variable that I might adjust, uh, pitch, volume, intensity, speed, all of that is kind of in my head on sliders, you know, like mm -hmm. dials and sliders yeah. in my head. And one of them would be dialect. So it would behoove you to be able to dial it back and dial it up when you mm -hmm. want to. But mm -hmm. there is no need to try to eliminate it. I would not take an accent elimination course. I, I, I did, um, I taught a class for, not Groundlings, but uh, S Second Upright? City has oh, a City. voiceover class. Yeah. Uh, Kiff Vanden Heuvel uh, teaches, oh, yeah. is a wonderful teacher and had me in to guest once. And there was a woman that had a very thick Middle Eastern accent and she asked the same question. Right. Should I get rid of this? I went, oh my goodness, no. Because you will be the go-to woman with that dialect right. and you'll book everything right mm -hmm. because you can take direction and you understand you your voice and, do it well. and you'll do it and it's authentic right. and it's you right. what a wonderful thing to be able to bring to any voiceover like it's always going to be consistent you right. always sound like yeah. you and you're Start working you. in an international marketplace absolutely right. and one of right? the things i like to say too for folks especially if they're wanting to do animation i suppose even for your commercial or or promo read is like you know if you like i grew up and i have a ton of relatives in the south right so there's always going to be a Southern thing that comes out for me or whatever. Of course. So like pick and choose all the dialects, the celebrities, the roommate you had in college, like all those cast of characters, right? All the voices in your head and keep those sort of at your fingertips, you know, keep them in the voices in your head, keep them sort of close by so that they're accessible at all times. And so, you know, being from the South, you got a lot of folks within that that of that course. little that pie, that little Southern pie. Yeah, you know I was going to say keep them in your Rolodex, but that makes me sound very old. Right? No, I've, I have a, my mom had a Rolodex. It was like this in your Palm Pilot. There you go. Present. I fixed it. <laughs> no in problem. In your Blackberry. In your Blackberry. <laughs> I got a Blackberry. Oh, my pager just went off. <laughs> uh, this one comes in from uh, uh, one of our one of our fans and just a friend of the show, Jay Horace Black. He's hey, been here in the studio that's with my us. buddy. Yeah, he's a great guy. Jay um, Horace Black, by the way, Jay did, 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 did sounds, you guys work together? yeah, yeah, Jay, when I first met him, he, he sounds like Obama. I mean, just out of the gate. He's Aww. Obama. He opened mm -hmm. his mouth. He sounds like Obama, which is a wonderful thing to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it is. And I said, you got to make a demo. You got to make a demo just with your Obama voice. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't, even if you're not cast as Obama. Well, it's, it's our a, consciousness. Yes, it's a familiar sound. There was a time in voiceover where it was very trendy just to use right. a very recognizable celebrity sound. But the problem with that is people just started listening going, oh, I know who that is, and not listening to the commercial or the product. Uh. So now it feels like they're trying to find someone whose voice is fairly familiar, but you can't land it. Right. But that makes you listen. It makes right. you listen harder. Yeah. And uh, that's where I think he'll hit pay dirt. Right. Oh, um, speaking of just a voice that sort of stays in your head, and I, I do think that uh, that kind of, whether it's a trend or a certain voice, like th that's in our consciousness. Like whether you like that or not, that's just sort of there. So yeah, yeah market, you know, marketing, like go with your skills and your Absolutely, strengths, right? Absolutely, yes. Do you, um, 
I always like to talk about vocal hygiene because I don't have like vocal cords of steel. I warm up, not every day. I wish I remembered to, but I, I, I go in stretches where I'm pretty good about it. Um, especially if I have an animation thing, I'll be really sure. good about it. Or sometimes my promo gig is very low. They like this really low. And I'm always like, oh, I can do that. And especially as I get older, I'm like, ooh, that's a cool low part of my voice. What about you in terms of warming up, warming down, your vocal hygiene? Yeah, here's my warm up story. Mm-hmm. I, I was in uh, that television show 24. Mm-hmm. With Kiefer Sutherland, yep. we have nothing in common except voiceover, right? Right. Of so course. during my time, I was the bad guy in season two, mm-hmm. and during my time on the show, we would have lunch and talk about voiceover. Right. And he said we were talking about warming up, and he said, "Let me tell you how I warm up. I warm up based on the story I need to tell." I went, "Interesting." Explain. Yes. He said, Ooh, I "So love I had that. an audition, and they wanted a certain sound. So I sat in my car, and I rolled my windows up, and I smoked an entire cigarette, <laughs> tobacco." Smoked a whole cigarette, and then I proceeded to scream at the top of my lungs, just oh. <sighs> as hard as he could. Jeez. And then he opened the door, a big plume of smoke came out, and he sounded like this. He sounded like Gary Busey or Nick Nolte, right? Had all his texture, but that's what he wanted because that's what the story required. Now, I don't. For most but, voice talent, you would probably say just do like me, 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 right? And do your voice. <laughs> yeah. Do your voice. Uh, your, no, no, no. He was extreme. Down of the scale now, to get listen, to that lower register. I wouldn't yes. recommend people do that, but I love the notion of warming up for the desired story. That's actually true. I love it. Because uh, a lot of the animation stuff that I have is in the morning. Yeah. And I had this really dingy character that sounded a lot like Goldie Hawn for a show I did called Hoggle Monsters. And I'd wake up and I'd be like, hey, George, what's up? Can you come over later today to fix it? Oh, that's how my voice really is. <laughs> right. But I'd wake up and I'd be like, la, 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 la. You know, kind of get into that. <laughs> you have to find reg- it. <laughs> register. You have to find yeah, it. Yeah, So I, I say, because the trend right now, and just like any performing mm-hmm. art, Voiceover has trends. Of course, they want that very, very authentic right. sound. It used to be called conversational. It ain't that now. It's authentic. It's authentic. It's it's real. And I'll tell you how I'll right. tell you how I get to my authentic. If you tell you how to tell us, I'll how let you, you know. I got a buzzword. All right. Oh, tell us. Geico. That's all I say. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's all I say. I go. <clears throat> Geico. And I, that's because that, I sound like an announcer. When I wake up, I sound like yeah, I'm selling a too, car. Yeah. So. I have to endeavor in this market to sound like a regular guy if I want to book something other right. than an announcer. So sound. that's a great reason to go for somebody to go to you for coaching, right? Because we can all get sort of out of our voiceover yes. uh, voices. Yes. You know what works for me? Tell me. All right, I'm going to tell you. What works for me is to think that I'm just telling somebody some information. So like when all else fails, like there was a girl, uh, Brandy, at the in the of booth VPN, sure, and I'd be like, oh crap, and she, and I would be like, I'm just going to talk how I talk. So how we're talking right now? Yeah, that's how you talk. Instead of being like on sale, at, on sale now at Target, right? I'd be like on sale now at Target, right? And then uh, and so and also for me, who am I talking to? So like my sister, who we're about to call right now, um, because she's obsessed with The Walking Dead, she's gonna be like, oh my gosh. Um, uh, I always make sure, like if it's a healthcare thing, I'll be thinking of you know friends and family, making sure their health is you know something. Absolutely. I have like three usually go to people, and then I just am thinking about them. I look at the words, and I'm thinking. What do I want to say to them? And I just come up off the page and I share information with them. And that's how I stay in my real, that's authentic wonderful. read. Th- th- we do the same don't thing. Don't say that in your coaching or I'll kick your ass. But I do say it. That's what is my coaching. No, no, I say it a little better. What I say <laughs> is uh, it is about, okay, I, I know who I am. Right. And I tell clients, you must have a partner. You must have a right. partner. We need to hear you in now, dialogue. With exactly. Somebody. Now, yeah. do you have to have a partner for every commercial you do? I say yes, you do. Yes. But but in my life, I've only used the same five to eight people. Yeah, me too. I have Why? like three. That's usually. right, because they're familiar. When I talk, my ear will, will stand guard and go, that doesn't sound like the way you sound when you right. talk to your wife. Try again. And it keeps me honest. Right. So it has to uh-huh. be someone I know. So you have an immediate relationship. Immediate. And the casting director, if they're going through a million things, they're like, oh, oh, he sounds like he's, who is he talking to? That's right. All right, speaking of that, hold okay. on. So I hope she'll pick up. Okay, everybody just relax. So just so you guys know, my sister is a huge Walking Dead fan. I'm sorry, I'm FaceTiming her. Too. This is crazy. My sister's <laughs> name is Lisa. She's a famous DJ in Nashville. Hey. And I'm FaceTiming her. Um, and she knows because she's watching the show live. So she, so she knows. Oh, I love Right, her. exactly. Oh, you're hot. Oh, Zip it. Okay. I am. So it's going to be, oh my gosh. Lisa, are you in the dark? Yes, we're watching TV and it's. Well, you're live. You're live. So I just wanted you to say hi to Rick and everybody hi. here hi. at the OBS. There's hey. a friend George. Hi. So you can't see my beautiful sister, Lisa Manning, who's a famous DJ in Nashville. Hi, Lise. So hi, I just, everybody. can you tell us a little bit? You, so you started Walker Soccer Con. So we're on the air. I just wanted you to know that. So I, I watch oh. you on the air all the time. <laughs> right? Uh, well, I, yes. I, well, I didn't start Walker Soccer Con. James and Eric started Walker Soccer Con. Right. I just... Happens to be around and help them when they did the whole ground up, uh-huh. you know, 
Right. Started with a Kickstarter campaign. We'll be right back. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so she's a voice. You're a voiceover gal too. So I just wanted you to um, hear the voice behind the promos the that you watch so uh, frequently. Ready? Mm. Hold on. Her name is Lisa. Mm. Tonight on The Walking Dead, guest starring Lisa only on AMC. <laughs> <laughs> See? So Wait, Lisa awesome. and Charlie, her boyfriend there is her fiance. Excuse me, Charlie is there. Hey, Charlie. Hi, there Charlie. There you go. All right. <laughs> thanks for being such a good sport. I love you. And um, and thanks for being on the show tonight. You're awesome. Hey, sis. Thanks for having me. All right. So you grew up in a voiceover family, I told you. <laughs> Bye. Sis. All right. I'll call you later. Bye. 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 Well, that was right. charming. That was hilarious. That was wonderful. Oh, my right? gosh. Rick, how many, like, really? time, how many times did you have to say the letters AMC before you got it oh. right the first time? Sometimes I still don't get them right. <laughs> you know, because for a long time I was doing all the soaps for ABC. Mm -hmm. That's pretty close. Oh, boy, yeah. Tonight sure. on ABMC. Yeah, alphabet just goes right through me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, get, some, get a little take and get used to, sure. Uh, let's get back to Jay Horace's question. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, off. Jay. <laughs> Tangent. <laughs> Festival. Uh, where do you recommend a person go? I think you mentioned a few improv places, but where oh. would you recommend someone to go for some improv training? Well, you've had improv trainings mm -hmm. outside of a school environment, right? Correct. Oh, you you better speak to um, that. I, you know what I'm really loving these days for folks, myself, and um, I'm thinking about going back to I.O. West, which is, I think, is great. Improv Olympic in there. Um, they're terrific. The Groundlings is always great. Very character-driven. Um, I.O. West, is that the Santa Monica one? Uh, I.O. West, I don't know if they have another location, but they're okay. in Hollywood. Okay, Hollywood, gotcha. And then I love I.O. West. There's, um, there's Acme. There's the Groundlings. Of course, there's always the fabulous UCB, which is Upright Citizens Brigade. Um, and they're, very, they're like too smart for me. I feel like, huh? Uh, but they're, <laughs> they're, very, they're super, 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 super smart. And they there. all have a different approach, right? right? That's the reason that they exist. Right. But it's all about playing and learning yeah. certain kind of fundamental yeah. rules. And um, then the Nerdist, what's his name? Chris, uh, speaking of Walking Hardwick. Dead. Yeah, Talking, Dead. Talking with Chris Hardwick. So I believe yeah. that he, his, he's got a space now because he always did The Nerdist. That was the name of his podcast, oh, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. So I believe that The Nerdist now has become very popular to take improv classes. That guy's which, amazing. Right, that guy's which I think amazing. would be a very cool place to, to try some improv classes and even if you're outside the los angeles area just find a community college find any place that has an improv kind of start your own improv look it up and how to do it and do like an improv work, workout group with each other because it's all about just saying yes and and not denying and if anybody who's interested in looking up improv like that alone just keeps you sharp and sure you got it i'll try to sound purple and like i just grew three heads you got it for that take two you know so um <laughs> improv is just that that important i, I think. think it is yeah i absolutely agree yeah yeah cool. this might dovetail into that this is from one of our regulars, Devox, and he says, what are some good ways to get unstuck when you draw a blank in the way of a character or approach, especially when you're in the booth? My, so my answer to that is you start with you. So mm -hmm. like if I'm hired to play Richard III, I am Rick, Richard III. Mm -hmm. I am the vehicle for that character. Mm -hmm. So you start with you. And then you read, uh, when you're reading, you uh, a very thoughtful reader of the script will tell you... Um, personality traits. So they're very enthusiastic. They're bubbly. They are, they're flirty. And then I try to access, access that, that facet in myself. Mm -hmm. There's my flirty side without worrying about putting out a foot. Don't do that right away. Right. Find it within yourself now. Another thing that helps me break out of uh, any difficulty is if they give you a photo or drawing mm -hmm. and it, goes a long way with me. Of course. So if I see that my character is an ogre and he's got a big jaw, I'll make my jaw big. I'll, that helps. That that uh, informs performance quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And also, what I that I couldn't agree more. I'm like, check, check to that. Also, sometimes for me, doing the exact opposite, just if I'm like really, really stuck, just making some totally weird choice. And then, some, you know, sometimes you make a choice just to make a choice. Like, I'm, that character is suddenly going to have a lisp. You know, right. it's like that character has to have a lisp for a reason. Absolutely. Because she has really bad braces and nobody took them off and she's still in college, you know. Yeah. And that sounds like Pearl Crab. Sorry. But um, <laughs> but something like that. So to ha have do something that's totally the opposite. Yeah. Um, and, I like that idea. And, mm -hmm. and something else I try, too, is if I have a worry, like, geez, if, if I try to do it like that, I'm going to sound like Kermit the Frog. I say, go sound like Kermit the Frog. Go, right. go, do a all bad the, impression. Yeah, go all the way there. Right. So you can get rid of that worry. Get rid of the worry. Right. Sound like it. All right. right. You'll probably find out that you don't sound like Kermit the Frog. And the voice print that you have is probably just right. Right. In yeah. fact, you know, one of the things that helps me a great deal is Mary Lynn Wisner's voice casting voice app that she has. Mm. And I, I have it on my phone since I'll show you. Um, 
She's just phenomenal. And her voice uh, app encourages you, talks about the five most common reason commercials or just sort of in general. And then she has this great uh, feature. So that's what it looks like. I don't know if we can, we can get a close-up of that later. It's just, um, a, oh, there it goes. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, look at that. And so then she has this great thing called add-on emotional triggers. And so I find this really, really helpful, right? So it'll say... Um, she just is so great. I love Mary Lynn. I love you, Mary Lynn. Uh, this is about me. I mean, <laughs> whatever. I and she'll add on, she'll have things to add on. For example, mischievous, ironic, sweet, vindictive, happy, grief, bewildered, terror, joy, ambitious, giggly, pride, flirty, uh, cautious, timid, annoyed, secretive, revenge, uptight. So this is perfect for like, this is triggering. Perfect. For, for games, for animation, for promo, for commercial, even for it's like a mom spot. With this authentic read, you're like, oh, my God, I know. I can't sound like a real person. I have to sound like a person that just picked their nose and walked across the street. Mm. I can't sound like a voiceover person. Or if you're doing animation, right? So you can add, like, eager or, like, in, indignant. or what, I mean, you can add indignant to, like, um, a mom spot. For sure. Suddenly she's like, oh, God, I'm this proud mom. Or you can have, a, you know, an it's animation great. read and be, like, adoring. You could be a, pr a prince and, or a princess and suddenly be like, oh, I love him. And just add a little bit of, like, <laughs> so these adjectives alone have helped me. I can't stress this enough. I bring my phone into the booth. That's great. So I don't miss a call from Rick Wasserman Please or don't. George, but also to have Mary Lynn's app for these. I, she calls them suggested emotion slash add on triggers. Great. And it's really helpful. Here's kind of a tip and trick that I think is a really good idea. Now you're going to get direction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll say something. Could you make it a little faster? Can you make it a little slower? But what I recommend people do is rather than just simply mechanically make your read faster or slower, mm -hmm. because the pitfall there is it will sound like you've mechanically sped yourself up right. or slowed yourself right. down. It's not telling any story. So I recommend people give themselves a storytelling reason to speed up or slow down. Mm -hmm. Like what you're about to say is the most important thing you're going to say to this person today. So take your time. Make sure it's very clear. And that will slow you down right. for a reason. Right. For the same reason, like they're about to leave. They're about to get on a plane. You don't have, and so you've got to say it now. Right now. So will now there's this, blah, right, blah, blah. exactly. So now it's fueled with something as opposed to just make it faster. Right? Right. Better than a technical note to take a technical note and make it a storytelling note. Again, voice acting. And it helps keep, you know, I think a lot of the times we're in our booth uh, these days, it did, certainly wasn't like this when I came up in the VO world, but we're in our booths a lot by ourselves. So all the more reason to, um, to be talking to someone, you were always in dialogue with someone, even if it's tonight at nine. That's right. L'Oreal. You're still in dialogue with someone. It's so tricky, but that's, that's Absolutely. That's I do this stuff all the time. Like yeah. if I'm introducing a product, in a commercial, right. in my booth, I actually introduce, I pretend it's in my hand, introducing the brand new Big Mac. I pretend it's there. Right. Like I'm offering it to someone. Right. It's slightly psychotic, but I think that's right. <laughs> I think you have to find a little bit of psychosis in the booth. Yes. That's the name of my book. Right. Slightly psychotic in the booth without that's it. pants. Hi, without the only, pants. The only no, last, pants optional. Pants <laughs> the only last two questions are really fan questions. Uh, Trey Mosley wants to hear Rick say Into the Badlands next on AMC. Sounds just, I was going to say, it sounds just like Walking Dead, but it, it doesn't. It's very, very different. Are you ready? Into the Badlands, only on AMC. Very different yes. than Walking Dead. <laughs> it is kind of different. Wait until you hear like, the Fear oh, the Walking oh, 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 oh. Dead voice. Entirely, a whole different ballpark. And then Catherine asks, our producer Catherine, she Hi, says Catherine. Uh, she wants uh, Lori to say something, do a, do a hallmark oh. sound or hallmark mm. read. Let's see. I'm trying to think of something really good like um, Candace Cameron Bure is back in Murder, She Wrote. Only tonight at nine. <laughs> Only tonight at nine. Well, when you're doing a lot of promos, there's like tonight at nine, tomorrow at nine, next at nine, always at nine, next month at nine, next year at nine, 2020 at nine. Only on Hallmark <laughs> Movies and Mysteries. Nine. Right. Nine. 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 Yeah, yeah. Like Thank that. you. There you go. Hey. Those, are the, those are the last two questions. <laughs> good you ones, guys too. are All actually... Right. Uh, you're allowed to stop talking. Oh, okay. If great. you like, if you <laughs> like, I don't want to. If you like, no, no. It's been it's been fantastic having you guys. Here. Thank you, George. Oh, this has been great. If I don't if I don't get the hook, no one will ever leave <laughs> yeah, because no, you're won't. having too we much won't. fun. That's man. exactly right. We'll just keep talking. No, it's fantastic. But Lori, I, thank you, and I'm glad yeah. after all this time to have finally like met you for real and no, said I words know. to you yes, and looked exactly. at you in the eye, and it's great. So. And this has been lovely. Thank you. And let's just stay here. I'm just hanging. I'm so. How is this baby doing? I just need a beer. <laughs> you okay? What, what's what are what are Dan's doggies' names again? Oh, uh, Ari, mm -hmm. and the other one is Tinky. That's right. I held Tinky when I was doing a. Yeah, um, Tinky must be outside or in the okay. house. Ari and Tinky. <laughs> <laughs> <Tonight>. <laughs>
<laughs> They've been really good tonight. Yeah. Um, we need to open the door for. Our yeah, we're gonna let yeah. we're gonna open the door now. Let this place breathe, and I'm gonna wrap up the show so we can okay, so we so can we'll get some quiet. oxygen. Okay. So, um, before before we let them go, we're gonna I'm gonna say thank you again to Rick and Lori. You guys were wonderful. It was so fun to have a different flavor in the studio and a, and a new perspective, and it's just been a blast having you guys. Thank you. I would just want to say that next week um, we've got Sarah Jane Sherman here in the studio. She was recent or recently head casting director for Disney, and we'll hear where she's casting now. So it's really cool having on casting people because that's a perspective that's not you're going to find too often. That's kind of cool inside stuff for voice actors. May 29th, we're going to be dark for Memorial Day. We're going to take a day off. Yes, happy about that. On June 5th, we've got J.J. Jurgens, who is a promo voice actor, who uh, we happen to see down in, at, in Atlanta, at VO Atlanta. And uh, on June 12th, uh, we're actually having, speak of David H. Lawrence, we're having David H. Lawrence the 17th here in the studio. So we're looking forward to that. Donors of the week, we have a few as always. You guys that donate all the time, we really appreciate it. Some of you, some of you even subscribe, so it automatically sends a little bit of money every month. We really appreciate it. Andrew Kaufman is one of our regular donors. Sarah Borges is another regular donor. Eric Aragoni, he just donates every week. Every episode, he sends us money. I he's a he's nuts, but but we really love him. Ant- Antland Productions also donating money to the show. Um, other donations coming in from Brian Rausch. Thank you. And Graham Spicer. Hey, Graham. And, uh, also a few more here at the bottom. Jack DeGolia. Jack does our show notes every week for us and he still donates money to the show. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Joseph Harrison. And last but not least, Christy Burns. So those are some of the donors that we've been receiving. We really appreciate that. It really it's an extra little helper to keep the show on the air and keep me going to keep this studio working and working out the bugs and the glitches. It's a never ending pursuit to get this system, this studio, everything to work smoothly. Anybody who watched the show tonight who got to see it live, you got to see what can go wrong during the show. And it's, it's always interesting, slightly stressful, but we always have a lot of fun. And that's just the way it is on a show like this where everything has been cobbled together by moi and uh, we put together a TV show. Every, it's, it's a lot of fun. We get to play TV. Um, we, we have VOBS stuff you can buy. Go over to VOBS TV and click on the big red button if you want logo wear. Um, our opening tonight, I think it was the same one we were in last week, wasn't it? Was it Jeff Bergonian on the opener? Who was it, Andrew? Do you remember? It was a female? He's going to look it up. I want to give credit where credit's due. It won't show you the name of the person in the title. I wasn't listening to the opener, so I missed it. That's okay. When the name comes up, just shout it out. Um, if you want to find out what's going on at Open Edge Studio, my employers, go to at Edge Studio on Twitter. That's really the best place to find out the latest things going on in the Edge Studio training universe. Go tune in. Yeah, Jack. Oh, it was Jody. Thank you. We had Jody on the voiceover tonight for the opening of the show. Um, what else do I have to say? Podcast version. Most of you are listening. A lot. Well, a lot of you are listening on the podcast version. But if you'd like to listen to the show instead of watching it, because it is a long show, you can subscribe on podcast on Stitcher, iTunes. Basically, if you have an app that lets you listen to podcasts, just type in VOBS. You should be able to find us. If you can't, let us know. And if you want to be here in the studio live and have snacks, pet dogs, you know, be part of the fun here and sweat. Um, you can just email the guys at vobs.tv. Yes, we are all losing weight together just by sitting here. It's good thing um, we wore deodorant. <laughs> the vobs. <I'm> <laughs> the guys at vobs.tv to be in the audience. Just type subject audience. So, thanks to again to our sponsors: Vizzy Video Demos, Harlan Hogan, Vo Extra. Edge Studio, Source Elements, vo to go in the Rehearsal app, and Antland's Killer Demos for helping us get this show on the air every week. And I want to thank um, Dan and Marcy for letting us use their fantastic facility, their house and their studio, to make the show happen every week. It's really great to have such a cool, well, not cool, but neat space. <laughs> not so cool tonight. Uh, too. Yes, 
Yeah, exactly. Um, and we've had uh, Jack Daniel here in studio. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, buddy. For, he's put together our show notes. Or uh, he's uh, helped us with the questions. For the, we really appreciate it. And um, Andrew Bushwitz for switching and dealing with George's ever-changing production system that <laughs> every week he has to relearn. Sorry, Andrew. Wah, wah. He just—he drove from he's so Vegas. Cute. He's good. You drove from Vegas. He to drove from Vegas to, to make tonight. sure he got here for the show Aww, tonight. Oh, yeah. yay! Yeah. Super. That deserves a round of applause and some other things that we yeah. can't say. What? Oh, dear. Jack the goalie on the show. <laughs> Jack the goalie in the show notes, as I said, and Lee Penny <laughs> for just being Lee Penny. Oh, and Catherine for Catherine Curden for getting our guest. Yay. I almost yay, forgot. Catherine. Sorry, Catherine. We love you, Catherine. Anyway. That's been VoiceOver Body Shop, episode 77. It's been a lot of fun. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. This is George Whittem for VoiceOver Body Shop, or VO. Everybody, BS! Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Before time began, Woo! Woo! Stop TV. Wow! <laughs> or else.